Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. And this is live on the power cam. Let's go, man. From around the world and across the country, from your own backyard, this is the reality of law enforcement today. For the next 60 minutes, you'll be a witness. You'll see everything an officer sees. The fastest pursuits, the scariest shootouts, the most extreme and unusual crimes I need some help. ever captured on video. Police and news gathering agencies around the world have sent us this footage because they want you to see for yourself the insanity of criminal behavior. Because only when you've seen how it happens and why it happens can you make sure it doesn't happen to you. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. I've been in a lot of high-speed pursuits in my 27 years in law enforcement. And I've discovered that the criminals who run today are faster than ever. But so are the cops who chase them. So fasten your seatbelt. This is going to be a wild ride. Shawnee County, Kansas. A stolen vehicle rockets down the freeway. I said it was this Bavarian-built hot rod barrels past traffic at mind-boggling speeds. 125 miles an hour. Deputy's LT1 Camaro has the muscle to match the European racing car move for move. So the LT1 is a uh, Corvette motor. It's a computer chip, which gives it even more performance than, than what the general public would have. When the Beamer guns its 240 horsepower engine, the deputy answers back with the Camaro's 350 horses. This person seemed like somebody who had his mindset on one thing, and that was getting away at all costs, no matter who was in danger. We're in the inside lane, I got it in front of me. And to make this unbridled boldness even scarier, the daredevil behind the wheel is only 15 years old. At these speeds, his youth and inexperience are a lethal combination. Miles ahead, units lay down spike strips. But it's a tough call to know which lane the pedal-punching driver will be in. Finally, the suspect is right on course. Stop sticks line the road. Coming up on one of your units. But the teen makes a startling move. The BMW quickly jams around the spike strips. Stop strips do not work. Both high-performance cars attack the road and somehow keep from flipping over, even at triple-digit speeds. Suddenly, the BMW leaps into high gear, and in seconds, it cranks up to 150. Moments later, another roadblock is set up. But the teenager spots the other unit up ahead and slams on the brakes. The deputy in pursuit can barely stop in time. It's a near miss as the BMW barrels across to the other side of the freeway, blazing over the center divider. Patrol cars move in to round up this adolescent car thief. But the supercharged vehicle torpedoes from zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Yet no matter where he turns or how fast he flies, the pursuing officer is right with him. The deputy pulls even. What happens next is terrifying. Once the officer gets door to door with the suspect, the teen threatens to ram him. 
Uh, the subject made a uh, movement with his shoulders as if he was driving like he was going to swerve at me. The officer reacts instantly. For one heart-stopping moment, the cruiser takes flight. When the car was airborne, I thought that this, 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 could, this could hurt. This could really hurt me. But now the deputy finds himself on a collision course with another cruiser. At the speed that he was traveling when I came back across the roadway, if we would have made contact, if I would have even touched his car, uh, it could have sent him spinning. The officer is out of the pursuit. But the car stealing kid runs out of luck. A few miles away, the BMW breaks down and the suspect is caught. The capturing of the subject was probably done within 15 minutes after the time that I uh, ran into the guard room. If the 15 year old subject can learn one thing from this chase, I hope that he learns that it's better to stop and face the consequences now than it is to keep running. This kid was driving like he was going for the high score in a video game. But this wasn't a game. It was real. We're on the inside lane, I got it in front of me. Real life, real fast. Coming up on one of your units. For one inexperienced underage driver, it could have been deadly. Stop station, not work. And for one experienced deputy, on 25. it was the fastest, scariest chase of his career, and a ride he will never forget. South Salt Lake, Utah. The four suspects in this car were just involved in an aggravated assault. They tried to start a fight at a bowling alley. When the security guard stepped in, one of them threatened to pull a shotgun. Now this wild bunch is on the run, tearing up a local suburb. They barge through red lights and blow stop signs without caring who might get in their way. The officers want to ram them. But on these neighborhood streets, it would be far too risky. Instead, they give the suspects a warning tap. The driver brushes it off and charges on. The officers can only follow. Suddenly, the road widens. Now is their chance. And this time, the primary unit gives the car more than just a tap. The officer clipped the suspect's rear fender, a perfect pit that whipped them 180 degrees and killed their engine. Patrol cars swarm the vehicle. It turns out the stunned foursome does not have a shotgun. They decide to give up without a fight. As officers get the suspects out, they make a startling discovery. The reckless driver is a woman, eight months pregnant. Thankfully, no harm was done to her unborn child. This soon-to-be mother has a lot to learn about responsible parenting. Tonight, she ignored rule number one, don't let your child be born behind bars. When an officer pursues multiple suspects, he has to make a choice. Which one of those suspects poses the greatest threat? McDonough, Georgia. A white Nissan is pulled over for a routine violation. But when the officer gets out of the patrol car to issue the citation, something unexpected happens. The passenger takes off on foot, and the driver roars away. The officer jumps back in the patrol car and goes after the Nissan. He finds it making a U-turn nearby as a second passenger tries to bail out. Interrupted by the officer, the driver steps on the gas and lays rubber, his friend still clinging to the open door. Central. With his pal back in the car, the suspect races through country roads, blowing stop sign. I'm making a right on Philip stop sign. When he gets a lead, the driver eases off the gas just long enough to drop off another passenger. The officer could easily let this speed demon go and call her the runaway instead. But the real menace in this situation is behind the wheel of the Nissan. 
and the policeman intends to stop him. The suspect rips onto a busy highway, and the danger skyrockets. As the driver roars up to a stoplight, an 18-wheeler is in his way, so he uses the left turn lane to go around the big rig, just as the light turns red. We'll be allowed to go make 38 deep. With no concern for anyone else, the defiant driver roars through the intersection. He then veers right past two backup units onto an access road and rockets onto a crowded interstate. With his lights flashing, this guy is definitely a high-speed hazard. He charges down the left lane, tailgating other motorists. Officers have to put a fast end to this pursuit. Speed's going to be approximately 85. With the aid of another police unit, the officer gets ahead and blocks the suspect in. Okay, slow it down, take him to the wall, box him in, box him in. The driver is finally shut down and shut away for a year. This officer didn't go after the first passenger or even the second. And speed's approximately 85. Instead, he chased down the suspect. Take him to the wall who drove a four-cylinder compact like a turbocharged hot rod. Because he was the real menace. Coming up on world's wildest police videos. Look at you. The fastest chases ever. Get it, get it, get it. A triple-digit dash down a Florida bridge. Bumper cars at 90 plus. And motorcycle mayhem. Ooh, he just about lost it there. And full throttle. When bad guys have a need for speed. He's gonna cut the median. Good guys will do what they have to do to shut them down. <laughs> Fools and drunks. Stand right at the end of that white line there. When suspects this reckless hit the gas. Have shoot a motorcycle. They don't get wise or sober oh, watch out. Now, let him hit you. until it's too late. <laughs> Police have several ways of telling whether a driver has had too much to drink. But with some suspects, the only thing an officer needs to use are his own two eyes. In Largo, Florida, a sheriff's corporal prepares to give a roadside sobriety test. Walk right over here to him. She would stand right, right at the end of that white line there. But something tells him his subject just isn't going to pass. Stand right. I want you. I want you to. I want you to stand at the end of it. Look at you. What are you doing driving a truck in that condition? Trying to do what he did. What who did? Catfish. Your buddy? Yeah. But catfish is nowhere to be found leaving this guy on his own to face the music. All right, I'm going to ask you to take a couple tests for me. I can't. You can't? Why not? Well, for one reason, I, I'm drunk, man. He certainly is, and the tests will prove it. The first test requires knowing the alphabet, so he asks about the man's education. You got high school? I got 20 years of education. I graduated 10th uh, grade twice. <laughs> okay. It's hard to argue with logic like that. And with two decades of schooling, the alphabet should be no sweat. Close your eyes, tilt your head back, and go ahead and recite it for me. B. Close your eyes. C. D. E. Watching him wobble, the officer puts his hand out, just in case. L-M-O-P. In case you fall down, I don't want you, I'm going to catch you. Oh, thanks, man. That's more than catfish would do. The corporal is flattered to be a better buddy than the immortal catfish, as the man stumbles to the end of the test. I believe it's X, Y, Z. Thank you. Despite his troubles, the man is willing to do another test, as long as he knows the officer is there for him. Close your eyes. You gonna catch me for the fall? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. You know I'm drunk. <laughs> eyes closed, keep them closed. Okay, left. Right. Left. Right. 
Right? God. Left. All right. With all the evidence he needs, the officer reads the drunk man is right. You have the right to remain silent. Maybe. The suspect knows he doesn't have to answer any more questions. You understand it's your right to explain to you? Yeah. But he also knows there are some questions that hardly need answers. You been drinking? Well, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And now that he's suddenly seen clearly, there's something else that's obvious to the man. But you are taking me to jail. This guy was definitely a funny drunk. I got 20 years of education. I graduated 10th grade twice. But there's no such thing as a funny drunk driver. You could have run into somebody's house. So no matter how nice the officer was to him. In case you fall down, I don't want you, I'm gonna catch you. Oh, thanks, man. That's more than catfish would do. There's no question that this man belongs behind bars. All right? Not. And not behind the wheel. Henry County, Georgia. A van barrels down a backwoods road. West King and Floyd. Moments earlier, the driver bolted from a citation for a cracked windshield. It was a snap decision. A bad decision that the man barely has time to regret. Suddenly, the lead-footed suspect hits a bend in the road at full throttle. Hey, hey, just 41, just 41, give me some backup. The results are heart-stopping. In one terrifying instant, the van catapults off the pavement. Hey, hey, just 41, just 41, give me some backup. Astoundingly, the driver is alive. But he still needs convincing to give up. Put your hands out the window! Put your hands out the window! As the man reluctantly emerges from the wreckage, get on the, ground. the get officer the proceeds with caution until he can get this culprit handcuffed. Get on the ground. By the time backup arrives, the policeman has his suspect in custody. This impulsive driver tried to outrun a citation for defective equipment. Give me some backup! But now he's got a whole lot more to fix than a busted windshield. Next, on world's wildest police video. I got one running. High pressure. This guy's an idiot. High drama. A high stakes struggle with a Carolina crack dealer. And a high speed battle on a Tampa Bay bridge. Coming your way. Hey, man. Speeds of 100 miles an hour. It doesn't take a rocket scientist on the car. to know what this means. So, what part of stop? Pull it over and stop. Don't these guys. I need help. Understand. Pinellas County, Florida. When a black Camaro charges across the county line, three sheriff's deputies take over a tire burning chase, tearing through the dark morning hours with the speedometer needle buried at over 100. The two suspects are determined to leave police in the dust. The driver is a known felon who already has two warrants out for his arrest. The car they're driving is stolen, and the trunk is full of counterfeit bills. These are career criminals, and they must be stopped. Corporal Richard Nalvin leads the pursuit. We were traveling a while on the interstate, anywhere from 100 to 115 miles per hour at any given time. Suddenly, the black sports car rages onto the Howard Franklin Bridge, 30 feet above Tampa Bay. The corporal floors the gas and manages to get ahead of the stolen vehicle. And as early morning commuters head into downtown Tampa, this causeway becomes a life and death obstacle course. Working as a team, the three squad cars try to surround the suspects. But like a wild animal, this Camaro refuses to be caged in. I had to now drive through my side view and rear view mirrors and watch what was going on ahead of me, as well as what was occurring behind me and what the suspect was doing. Again, the officer veers in front of the high-velocity fugitives, this time risking his own safety to keep an innocent motorist out of harm's way. With only four lanes of road and a three-story plunge on either side, 
deputies are hard pressed to keep this pursuit from blasting back onto dry land. One more time, Corporal Nalvin whips in front of the suspects. We were able to slow the vehicle to a point where we were closing up a box-in maneuver. We were going to use the man-made barrier of the Howard Franklin Bridge wall on the left side of the bridge as the fourth side of the box. Deputy Howard Skaggs moves into the side position, while a third deputy records the action on his dash cam as he brings up the rear. Now completely boxed in, the suspects make a desperate move. <laughs> Deputy Skaggs can only hold on as the stolen car slams into him, and the Camaro wildly skids across the road. He struck my vehicle, went spinning out of control. His vehicle was destroyed. But not even a crippled car can stop these outlaws from running. However, they jumped over the edge of the Howard Franklin Bridge. That was quite a surprise. Amazingly, the men survived the death to finally. They may have eluded the deputies, but not the Coast Guard. Within hours, both men are caught. When rampaging felons blew into Pinellas County, three deputies went on a heart-stopping, engine-gunning, fender-bending pursuit. But with patience, skill, and precision, the trio of officers made sure that these high-diving villains never stood a chance. Police officers never encourage civilians to put their own lives in jeopardy. But when an officer needs help, a good Samaritan can be the difference between life and death. Mebbin, North Carolina. A patrolman goes after a luxury coupe that rolls through a stop sign. But the officer isn't just looking to write a ticket. He's seen the driver around town and suspects him of selling drugs. So as the officer approaches the car, he's keeping his eyes open for anything out of the ordinary. The man doesn't have the paperwork, but he's got excuses. Again, the answer is no. This guy may have something to hide. But he isn't hiding anything when three rocks of crack cocaine fall out of his sock. Put your hands on the car. Put your hands on the car. But instead of cooperating, All right. All right. the man struggles with the officer. All right, sir. Let it drop it. All right, drop it. Drop it. The suspect is clutching right. something in his hand, worried it might be a weapon. Drop it. The patrolman forces him to let go, and the dealer's drug money goes flying. When they get back to their feet, the fight intensifies. The officer uses his pepper spray. But at such close range, both men get a face full of mace. Now the policeman is fighting the desperate suspect and his own reaction to the pepper spray. Put your hand down. He needs help. Put your hand down. Thankfully, aid arrives in the form of a good Samaritan. Moments later, another citizen joins in. By the time the first backup unit arrives, the suspect is in cuffs. The officer thanks the men. But they aren't done yet. These civic-minded citizens help clean up the scattered cash. And even though some people would consider keeping a little for themselves, these two men hand over every cent. They know it's evidence. It was a sense of relief when they walked up. You know, anybody that wanted to help out could have helped out that day. Put your hands on the car. This drug dealer lost his stash. There's a big plastic bag full of crack. His cash. And this roadside wrestling match. I need help. All because two good Samaritans were willing to protect and serve. You got it. They call for help. An officer in need. It's good to know that you have people out there that's willing to help you. But I, I appreciate it. OK, that's OK. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Speeds of 100 miles an hour. What were they expecting? Carolina Crooks didn't expect this. 
Rioters in Korea didn't expect this. And Florida car thieves weaving all over the roadway definitely didn't expect this. Expect the wildest. We just about lost it there. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Criminals never learn. So officers have to teach them that for every action, there is a swift and powerful reaction. Police cruisers are built to take the hard knocks because you never know when a police pursuit will turn into a battle of the bumpers. Spartanburg County, South Carolina. Sheriff's Deputy Randy Hollifield takes the lead on a hot pursuit. Going by the split, going by the split, headed towards Springfield Crow. The two suspects are wanted for 70 home burglaries. Deputy Hollifield isn't going to let them reach 71. He taps their bumper. It's a warning that this deputy means business. Instinctively, the driver hits his brakes. But then he decides he's up for the challenge. When they decide to run, number one, that's probably their biggest mistake. Number two, I think that even though people think that they are, they're not trained to be able to drive the way that they're going to be driving. Up ahead, police scramble to set up a roadblock. Meanwhile, the suspect figures he can dish it out as well as take it. He cuts off another police car. Sensing that the wild driver might do something crazy, Hollifield sends up an alert. Tell you watch him, cause he's gonna hit you. The officer tries to stop the car before it reaches the blockade. But it doesn't work. As terrified drivers watch from their cars, the officers have no choice but to let the crooks through. Now it's one on one, and Deputy Hollifield takes the gloves off. Incredibly, the featherweight car holds the road. The deputy moves in for the knockout punch. He's weaving all over the roadway. The driver's head flops like a rag doll. Anyone with a brain would stop right now, but these two blockheads keep going. The suspect swings right, making one last effort to trick the cop, but the officer has a trick of his own. He's now at the perfect angle for a pit maneuver, an officer's ultimate pursuit weapon. The deputy's persistence pays off. With a perfectly timed hit, this high-speed rumble is over. It makes you feel good to know that you took somebody off the, off the street that's been breaking into uh, people's houses and, and, and taking their goods, and it was also good that we were able to uh, get everybody's uh, property back to them. In Spartanburg County, crooks will always have to deal with gritty officers like Randy Hollifield. Coming right at you. These career criminals got 10 years behind bars to think about all their mistakes. And after 70 burglaries and a high-speed pursuit, they'll have plenty to think about. Protests are fueled by emotions. And when those emotions flare out of control, protests turn into riots. Seoul, South Korea. A peaceful sit-in at Seoul's National University takes a turn for the worse. Disgruntled subway workers protest legislation that jeopardizes thousands of jobs. They're an impressive show of force. But so are the riot police. The angry workers shower the officers with Molotov cocktails. This once quiet protest erupts into a full-scale riot. But the police have even more powerful ways of regaining control. Fighting for their livelihood, the laborers are relentless. The chaos intensifies. Suddenly, innocent people are in peril. The Seoul police use every tool in their arsenal, except deadly force. As the day wears on, the protesters finally wear out. The scene is reduced to rubble, but the riot is over, and it becomes clear that nothing was accomplished today. In South Korea, the struggle for basic human rights is still critical. But in a fight like this, there are no winners. Franklin, Indiana. Almost on the scene, reference a suspicious vehicle. 
A man in a red Jeep Cherokee squeals past officers and flies onto city streets. Police quickly learn the 4x4 is stolen. On top of that, the suspect has several felony warrants spanning across three states. Desperate to stay out of jail, he runs at full throttle. Police immediately make preparations to shut the outlaw down. The felon zips by waiting cruisers. He ignores traffic lights. Bullies other motorists. And drives at death to fine speeds. Why? Because he knows where he's going if he's caught. And police are determined to send him there. Officers lay out spikes. They puncture the tires, making the car difficult to control. And then some. Bit. By bit. The stolen Jeep disintegrates along the road. Incredibly, the man keeps on driving. Officers from other precincts join in the chase. Working together, they arrange to stop the suspect once and for all with a second set of spikes. This time, the spikes completely disable the vehicle. He's smoking pretty good. Having nowhere and no way to drive, the man prepares to run. But he didn't count on the lead cruiser to be a canine unit. Now, surrounded and worn out, the man gives up to get away from police. This guy was willing to run to the ends of the earth. But his car wasn't. He's smoking pretty good. He tried to push it to the limit. But when he pushed it too far, his car and his future fell to pieces. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. How fast is too fast? Uh, 100 miles an hour. High throttle bike thieves push it too hard. Ooh, he just about lost it there. A dangerous drunk pushes his luck. And deputies push right back. It's pedal to the metal action. We're about to crash. Stand by. Next. It's about speed. I'm now behind the motorcycle. It's about danger. When suspects this fast hit the highway, it's about time they learn the consequences. When crooks want to steal a vehicle, a motorcycle may seem like an easy target. But when the action heats up, the guys who steal bikes aren't always prepared to handle them. Kenilworth, Illinois. An officer doesn't realize these two young men are on a stolen motorcycle. But when they take off through a red light, they tip their hand. Tip shoot a motorcycle on westbound. The suspects aren't wearing any safety gear but they refuse to give up their dangerous new toy. When they nearly T-bone an SUV without flinching, officers realize these boys will hold nothing back. They blaze along city streets, blowing past other cars and plowing through red lights. They're willing to violate any traffic law to get away. He's driving really recklessly. Suddenly, the kids take a sharp turn hoping to lose officers in a suburb. Residential streets are like an obstacle course, but the Hellions don't slow down a bit. Suddenly, the street dead ends into a parking lot, and they almost dumped the bike. Ooh, he just about lost it there. The suspects had to brake hard to avoid collision. With two of them on board, the cycle is dangerously top-heavy. Luckily for them, they don't wipe out this time. 
They rebound quickly and rumble back onto city streets. Now the suspects are feeling invincible. After blowing one more red light, they turn things up a notch and rocket ahead at over 100 miles an hour. The officers aren't willing to match their speed. Unlike the reckless kids, their concern is public safety. Unfortunately, that means the suspects could be in the next county by now or they could have suffered a far worse fate. Suddenly, the officers round a bend and spot the bike. 1050. The boys lost control and laid it down on the roadside. But amazingly, they're on their feet and running. He's on foot. They tried to disappear into a nearby neighborhood, but the officers nabbed them within minutes. These kids wanted something without having to pay for it. Give us a motorcycle on westbound. But when their runaway greed sent them on a rampage, just about lost it there. They nearly paid for it with their lives. Hampton, Georgia. Drug interdiction officer Kevin Thomas pulls over a suspicious vehicle. Stop the vehicle, sir. It looks like the driver is going to comply, but traffic stops on this beat are rarely that easy. Thomas is hardly surprised when the man takes off. I'm in pursuit of this vehicle now. The suspect makes a mad dash to get away. In his haste, he nearly T-bones a cargo truck. This time, it's a near miss. Next time might be a direct hit. Officer Thomas wisely calls for backup. Heavy traffic forms a natural roadblock. There's only one way out. The suspect creates his own lane and squirms past the trap. Then it's down a side road. Once again, the roving renegade blazes his own trail. He swings one of the widest U-turns this officer has ever seen. By this time, Officer Thomas has no doubt that the driver is carrying drugs. He's trying too hard to get away. The chase hits a straightaway, and the driver gets a hefty lead but he's not as lucky as he thinks. Just down the road, Sergeant Ashley Gillum drags a spike strip across the pavement. He has to make sure that the crook hits the spikes and not him. As the man races down the street, the cautious officer tugs the strip. It's a perfect hit. All four tires roll right over the spike strip. Seconds later, the car stops running, but the suspect doesn't. Drugs in hand, he hoofs it down the road. He's bailed out. He thinks he can escape into the woods, but it doesn't take long for the police to catch up with him. This guy thought he could get away if he only ran fast enough and hard enough. But thanks to the tag team work of two officers and a trusty spike strip, this drug dealing suspect is staring down a six year sentence. Plenty of time to let him catch his breath. Pinellas County, Florida, 2.30 a.m. When a reckless driver runs a stop sign, a sheriff's deputy takes off after him and immediately calls for backup. If there was any doubt about how dangerous this person is, those doubts disappear when the suspect roars the wrong way up a freeway off-ramp speeding headlong into oncoming traffic. As I was heading southbound going towards the actual incident, the suspect vehicle was coming northbound in the southbound lane straight at me. The officers have no time to think, only react. The pursuing deputy slams into the suspect's vehicle. The car spins out of control, and the deputy tries to box it in. We had a lieutenant and a sergeant say, get the vehicle off of the roadway, as we did not want to involve any other citizens. Glass and metal fly off the suspect's car, but his engine still works. This time, the deputies are too fast for him. That was basically rammed the vehicle at the center point, um, causing a T-bone. Once I T-boned the vehicle, that completely stopped it. With the doors blocked, there's only one way this guy's getting out. With only moments to avoid catastrophe, officers had to instinctively fall back on their training. And it wasn't until this high-speed chase ended that deputies got the lowdown. 
on why this wrong way, road raging, bumper crunching renegade wielded this car like a battering ram. I got him in custody almost. He was drunk. Now this public menace is out of the driver's seat and headed straight to the slammer. <laughs> Next, on World's Wildest Police Video, an outrageous chase get it, get it, get it. that tears through three states and, we're at 100 miles an hour. and just gets faster and faster. 125. Once an officer begins a pursuit, he wants to see it through to the finish. So even when a chase threatens to cross the state line, most officers will continue until the suspects are in custody. Columbia, South Carolina. A car rockets ahead of a state trooper at 100 miles an hour. This stolen vehicle was hotwired in Miami. The 18-year-old car thief has already blasted through Florida and Georgia. Officers don't know why the suspect is running. They only know that this has become a multi-state pursuit. Negative, he's driving all over the place. And now the South Carolina state troopers are on his tail. The suspect recklessly weaves around traffic, passing slower cars by driving up on the right shoulder. Oh, God, the daring driver blazes down the highway toward the North Carolina state line. Two unmarked patrol cars join the fever-pitched pursuit. Go, go, go. One of the units moves into position to slow down the speeding felon. The pursuing officer warns him how dangerous the situation really is. A tenacious trooper tries to get close enough to pit the suspect's bumper. But at these speeds, it's just too dangerous. The officer won't risk anyone's life, not even the suspect's. With the state line quickly approaching, North Carolina authorities are on alert. Meanwhile, their South Carolina counterparts step it up a notch. Spike strips are laid across the pavement, and police block traffic on both sides of the highway. All of a sudden, the suspect sees the spikes, but instead of stopping, he floors the accelerator and skids out of control, right off the road. When officers reach the twisted wreckage, the suspect is nowhere to be found. Amazingly, he's discovered at a nearby phone booth, making a toll call to his mother. And that's how officers learned why this car thief was headed north. He was hell-bent for a family reunion in New York. No rest stops included. But his plans got derailed when the South Carolina troopers took him out of his New York state of mind and put him into the Florida State Penitentiary. From zero to a hundred, from a hundred oh, no. to oblivion. When speed becomes a criminal's only friend, whatever gets in the way becomes an enemy. When that happens, this guy's an idiot. All it takes is one officer we need to, take him out here now. to show the bad guys All right, we got it, what a real enemy can be.